The final complex of the electron transport chain is complex 4 and this is what we're going to focus on in this lecture. Now complex 4 is also known as cytochrome C oxidase and along complex 4 what happens is the electrons are transferred from cytochrome C molecules onto oxygen so we generate water molecules and we also help establish a proton electrochemical gradient that will be used by ATP synthase to actually generate those high energy ATP molecules. Now complex 4 contains two important groups. One of the group are the heme groups and the other groups are copper atoms. Now we have two heme groups, heme A and heme A3, and we have three copper atoms. Two of these three copper atoms basically associate with one another to form the copper A, copper A center. And the third, the other copper atom we call copper B, actually associates with the heme A3 to form the heme A3 copper B center. And this is where we're going to basically reduce that oxygen to form water molecules, as we'll see in just a moment. So let's actually go through the steps of how this process takes place and how these electrons are transferred from the reduced cytochrome C molecules that we produced along complex 3 onto the oxygen to form the water molecules. So let's begin with diagram number 1. So this is our inner mitochondrial membrane, this is the matrix, and this is the intramembrane space. Now we generate cytochrome C molecules in their reduced form along complex 3 and then the cytochrome C in its reduced form dissociates from complex 3 and travels and binds onto complex 4 and once it binds onto complex 4 it transfers an electron initially to the copper A copper A center then the electron goes on to heme A and then it moves on to heme A3 and that electron also ultimately ends up being transferred onto the copper B and it reduces the copper B. Now what happens is, so let me grab a purple, um, what happens is, so we have our copper in its 2 plus state and when it gains a single electron, so we have a single electron coming in and when it gains that electron, it is basically reduced into copper plus. So anytime the copper in this diagram uh, abstracts an electron, it binds an electron, it is reduced. So it goes from its oxidized form to its reduced form. And this is exactly what happens in this diagram when this copper B gains an electron. And it also what happens when this copper A gains an electron. Now notice in the diagram we actually have two of these cytochrome C molecules in their reduced form and that's because what, what happens is first a single cytochrome binds onto this section giving off an electron, the electron ultimately ends up reducing this copper B. Then that oxidized cytochrome C leaves and a second reduced cytochrome C binds and gives off an electron so ultimately we have two of these cytochrome C molecules in their reduced form being oxidized give off two electrons one of the electron ultimately ends up reducing the copper B and the other electron ultimately ends up reducing the heme A3 so this should be heme um, the heme A3 and so we summarize this step in the following way. So we have two reduced cytochrome C molecules give off a total of two electrons, so one electron per cytochrome C molecule. One of the electrons stops at the copper B group reducing it as discussed here, and the other basically stops at the heme A3 reducing that heme A3. And once these two groups are in their reduced form, only then can they actually bind oxygen. So in the next step, in diagram two, we have an oxygen, and the oxygen is the same oxygen molecule that we essentially breathe in from the environment. The oxygen is basically used to form 
something called a peroxide bridge between this heme A3 and this copper B. So once the heme A3 and the copper B are in their fully reduced form and the, uh, a diatomic oxygen molecule is actually abstracted and it is used to actually build a peroxide bridge between this structure and this structure here. Now, once we form this bridge, what happens next is from the matrix of the mitochondria, two protons are abstracted. And those two protons are actually used to help break this bond. But before the two protons are used, two more of these reduced cytochrome C molecules are actually oxidized by protein complex four. So two of these cytochrome C's are actually re uh, oxidized, so they release two electrons. One of the electrons ends up on this copper, the other electron ends up on this heme A3 group. And when those two electrons are abstracted at the same time, two protons are picked up by this protein four, uh, by this complex four structure from the matrix of the mitochondria. And this allows us to break this bridge between this oxygen and this oxygen here. So we form the copper hydroxide group and the heme A3 hydroxide group. So in step three, two more reduced cytochrome C molecules are oxidized to transfer an additional two electrons into our system. And two H, ply, uh, uh, two H plus ions are also obtained from the matrix of the mitochondria to help us break that peroxide bond, this bond here, and ultimately form these two structures. And once we form these two structures, two more protons are abstracted from the matrix and those two protons are basically used to form two water molecules. So one of these protons is picked up by, by let's say this hydroxide group and the other proton is picked up by this hydroxide group and so these two bonds are formed, uh, these two bonds are broken. We regenerate these two groups in their original initial oxidized form and we also form the two water molecules. So this is the final step. Now, by the way, as these electrons are basically moved from the cytochrome C to these two final groups, and as we ultimately form the two water molecules, a total of four protons, four hydrogen atoms, four hydrogen ions are essentially pumped from the matrix of the mitochondria to the intermembrane space. And this is shown in the, di in the following diagram. So this is basically the summary of these four steps. So once again, in the final step, in step four, the abstraction of two more hydrogen ions, two more protons from the matrix, helps oxidize the heme A3 and the copper B group back to their original oxidized state. In the case of copper B, we basically oxidize it back into the copper two plus form. In the process, we also use those two protons to actually generate two water molecules. And this is basically the summary of these four steps that take place on complex four. So let's take a look at the summary. So essentially, we have a total of four individual reduced cytochrome C molecules that come and interact with complex four, and they interact one by one. So initially, we have two interacting here, and then we have two interacting here to give us a total of four Cyto, uh, four cytochrome C reduced molecules. So they're oxidized into their oxidized form. In the process, a single oxygen molecule is used, the oxygen that we breathe in from the environment, and four protons are taken up from the matrix of the mitochondria. And we use the oxygen and the four protons to basically generate the two water molecules. In the process, this protein complex four also acts as a proton pumps and it helps us generate that electrochemical gradient for protons that we're going to use by ATP synthase to actually generate those high energy ATP molecules. So from the matrix, we essentially pump out four of these protons 
and so that our concentration on the uh, in the intramembrane space for the protons is greater compared to the matrix and as we'll see in a future lecture that proton gradient will ultimately be used to actually oxidatively phosphorylate the ADP molecules to form the high energy ATP molecules.